Good morning everybody, I am Dr. Ravindra Babu from Andhra Pradesh. So everybody is talking about the CAR ratio or 1 is to 12 for PG, 1 is to 15 for so and so. I am not commenting on anybody. Uh, the Andhra Babu member already given the information, 40% of the uh, posts are vacant in NITs and IITs. So I came to know that uh, all the honorable members, senior members are moving in committees. Only MTech faculties during the MTech student are BTech students. So in that case, why the regulatory bodies are not given the relaxation in care ratio, especially for rural colleges? Be it correct or not? Because uh, most of them are not interested to work in rural areas. At least for relaxation, 1 is to 15. You can say 1 is to 20 percent. Because you have given land relaxation, Bombay so and so, Hyderabad so and so, Vijayawar so and so, like that. Like that you can uh, encourage like that in care ratio. Thank you very much. Uh, very good morning to you all. Uh, myself, uh, Dr. Ved Vyas Divedi, I am Director of Noble Group of Institutions, Junagar, Gujarat. It's a rural area. And uh, I am here with uh, my team, uh, the President of the Trust, Shri Nilez Bulesia, and my friends. Uh, sir, uh, we are running the institution uh, comprising of uh, Engineering College, Diploma Engineering College, uh, Pharmacy, MBA, uh, UG, PG, all the programs. Uh, about uh, five years back, we started the journey to impart the education in the rural area of uh, Saurashtra. So my, uh, I'm agreed with all the uh, professors that number of rules, as per uh, Madam explained in the beginning, we are uh, not uh, agreed with. As for intake ratio is concerned, student to faculty ratio, suppose the seats are not full, let us take an example, uh, the intake is of course suppose 480, then uh, about uh, uh, 32 faculty members are required in the first year for the intake of 480. Suppose the seats are not full, if they are 300 only, then also AI, CT uh, and other regulatory. Most of the private engineering colleges as far as the PIs and campuses are concerned, most of them are fulfilling most of the criteria. Uh, as for infrastructure is concerned, as for laboratory requirements are concerned, as for library uh, matters are, are concerned. But this journal, of course it is not being utilized by the students who are in first year, second year or third year. Rarely it is being utilized by the final year students, those who are pursuing for their projects. The third point is related to the PhD uh, candidates availability for the professor's job. Being in rural areas, it is uh, a very, very difficult task for us to recruit them, to find them, and then to ask them or to request them to be there for a long duration. Suppose for five years or seven years or ten years, this is, in cities it is possible, but in rural areas, no one, uh, no one wishes to uh, settle down with family, and this is the major concern for the faculty recruitment. The next is R&D activity. So we are the teaching organizations and more or less teaching is our first priority. <coughs> R&D, it's okay, it should be there, it must be there. But up to what extent it is again a mandatory, if it is a mandatory rule, then up to what extent it is correct. Because if we give the priority to teaching, then probably R&D will be nowhere in the campus. If we go for R&D, then teaching suffers. The third point, next point is related to the salary. I think the salary should not be regulated by any regulatory authority. Let it be open as like the corporate world or industry. There should be healthy competition amongst the institutions and organizations, those who are running the engineering colleges, pharmacy colleges. The next point is related to integrated campuses. Suppose you are running a camp, uh, campus having number of disciplines like pharmacy, like ours, engineering, and fee regulatory committee at the state level have, as earlier as are told in uh, Himachal, we have the FRC, fee regulatory committee, they are regulating the fee, AICT ultimately, pharmacy council of India, 
their rules and their standards are different than AICT. If we meet the standards and requirements of AICT, then PCI doesn't agree upon. If we meet the PCI uh, rules and regulations, then AICT doesn't agree upon. <coughs> and uh, I'll, uh, I'll be agree with uh, my president of the trust, that the fee should again be on the same uh, ground what the salary is. It should be on the uh, healthy uh, competition ground. Thank you. Thank you all. Yes. Compromise the quality of the education. So, keeping that in mind, the minimum number of staff. If it is one is to fifteen, it could be ten percent this way or that way. Is still uh, the, the, they are considering. But if you go give more relaxation, you may not get. So you don't have the teachers to teach some of the subjects. Then coming to this, uh, uh, the generals. The intention of A C T is to. This, the culture of reference to journals should start uh, in the early days, maybe if not, if not first year, even second year, third year. Because when they come to final year, they are doing a project, they should have this uh, at least uh, literature survey, uh, some, some of these books and journals, if they know, they will get a better idea. They can get some innovative ideas to do this project. That will be the intention. And when they, some of them go to the PG, uh, MPEG and other things, I think uh, these journals are much because they will have to uh, publish the paper, present the papers. I think the, what is the kind of work going on in the world, so the students are supposed to know. I think with that uh, intention they have made, uh, these uh, the journals are compulsory. So PhD staff, I know, I, I do agree with you, uh, the PhD staffs are not available, uh, not only in rural areas, even in big cities, uh, especially in the field of uh, computer science and electronics, uh, it is very difficult. But at least, uh, the, our intention is, at the level of professors or at the level of heads of the department, if PhD uh, candidates are there, so they can encourage uh, students, uh, because it's a, as a teacher, it's not our job only do the teaching. So you should also involve in other activities of the <coughs> overall development of the department and overall development of the institution. So keeping that in mind, and uh, when we are getting the uh, final year project, so you should ignite the young minds. So unless I have a R&D culture, I don't uh, have that uh, the urge to uh, the, the ignite the young minds or encourage the students to do the R&D activities. And uh, you don't want to stop this uh, the, the institution only using forever. So for uh, any institution to grow up, so gradually you will have to build your institution. You should start a lot of M-Tech programs and PhD programs also. For that, I think that the PhD scholars and PhD, the teachers with PhD definitely help them in uh, involving these R&D uh, activities. So now coming to the salary, of course, uh, uh, ASP and UGC has fixed some uh, norms. So if you don't fix the norms, you know, Already, a lot of colleges are facing problems where the, uh, the admission is not there. And do you think uh, or do you expect them to pay a good salary? Even if the seats are full, it is very difficult to get a good salary. If you don't fix that minimum, even our, some of our staff members may be underpaid. So when they are underpaid, uh, can you expect a quality in teaching from them? So in order to have this uniformity, they have fixed the, this, uh, the ASD scale or the UGC scale. But there are colleges where they are given more than the ASD scale or more than the UGC scales also. It all uh, depends. So now, of course, uh, they come into the integrated campus. You, you do have different programs like pharmacy, engineering, and other things. So naturally, uh, the fee uh, is fixed by different organizations. I think uh, ASD should take a call. In, uh, when, whenever they have this integrated campus, whatever the program comes from the ACT, I think they can uh, take a call to have that uh, uniform uh, fee structures. Thank you. Cecil Anthony uh, from NLS campus in West Bengal. Uh, looking at this uh, topic for contributing higher technical education in India to global standards, I have three key issues to put across with this segment board. Uh, the first and foremost is what we've been, uh, many of us have been talking about is about <laughs> regulation. Uh, you have the input into the system which is regulated, so you talk about the student who comes in, that has got defined through an entrance examination or a process, you define at what price point the student should get in, then you define that uh, what is the entire infrastructure which is uh, required, so square feet of classroom, number of labs, corridor space, library space, number of computers, you define all that. Uh, 
and then when you put in all these definitions into place, what is left with the so-called edupreneur system is just to look at the teaching ability being given and to uh, scan the market in terms of placeability. These are the only two things which maybe an edupreneur in a practical position today can look at. Now, if you have to define everything around, can we look at re-looking at some of these definitions? You look at classrooms, you know, if you have a BTEC 1 uh, batch of uh, say electrical 60 students, you define you require four classrooms. In practicality, what happens is the, uh, the theory is in one session, one half, practical is in the other half. So a particular lab lies vacant for one half and a particular same classroom remains vacant for the other half. So can we keep on sweating this asset much better so that we can bring down the cost of this then you look at uh, the norms you define for faculties. I'll take an example of, uh, say, hotel management. Uh, AICT started M Tech programs, uh, sorry, masters in hotel management two years back. So when you started masters two years back, you don't expect PhDs to be there in the market. But the regulation says that to be a professor, he has to be a PhD. To be an assistant professor, he has to be so and so. So where do you, you won't get these people there. So you are trying to define things which are absolutely impossible to achieve. And the third thing is, see if you look at education, you know, education is divided into, I would say, two broad segments today, uh, formal and non-formal. On one side you have formal education which is highly regulated, too many multiple agencies trying to define too many things. On the other side you have got formal education where you have so many formal, uh, non-formal uh, companies, you know, like uh, the NIITs, the Aptex, the you know, Fashion Technology Institutes, uh, the Centre Learning Centres, Vocational Training Centres. Now most of these people are able to churn, uh, you know, the, the Frankfurt Institutes. Uh, most of these uh, institutes are able to churn out a lot more people and more employable in nature. Is it because they don't have so many regulations? Uh, is it because there is no body which is looking after them? Is it because they have got too, uh, far too much independence to look at in terms of uh, what should an entrepreneur be contributing? Very frankly, when I look at this topic today, uh, many of us in this room, we are actually acting as financiers to higher education, not as entrepreneurs. Because everything else is defined. So, and that too, we take the risk of that finance. We are not like a bank that you have a guaranteed uh, return coming in. Uh, you have, uh, if you default, you know, there is other asset which could be taken. So we are purely acting as financiers to a social cause. Now at the same time, let us look at another social activity called health. How many regulations are there in health? If you look at a hospital, is the salary of the doctor defined? Is the salary of the nurse defined there? Uh, is the, you know, pricing point at the entry of the patient defined. So you have hospitals in rural areas, uh, you have hospitals in metro cities, you have you know 4 lakh, 5 lakh cardiac surgery cost to even uh, 60,000. Isn't it the market which is defining that? So does higher technical education need to be so regulated? I think that's the most important thing to be addressed if, if India has to reach to global standards. We have to look at this faculty definitions if you have to reach a global standard and you have to understand what is the reality on the ground today. So can we relax the norms? Can we ask more people from the industry who have got industry experience who can join academics by relaxing the norms? And the third and the most important is what many of us have contributed and the policy makers have contributed. See, 40 years back we had a nice pyramid on education in India. The ITI layers, the diploma and the higher education suits. In the last 30-40 years, many of us who got into this higher education activity, we have reversed that pyramid. And some of us rightly said, we actually require skilled uh, ITIs and diploma holders rather than engineers for many of the jobs. So can the policy look at putting that pyramid more back into place rather than trying to look at, you know, the engineering institutes are not great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Good morning, sir. Good morning, ma'am. I represent Dr. B.C. Roy Engineering College, Durgapur. I have two fundamental questions to raise. Number one, 
education is supposed to be the concurrent list of the constitution. And number two, if there are agencies like AICD, UGC and others, should they be regulatory or should they be mentors? And finally, when Mr. Kapit Sikal became the minister of HRD, he advised or rather he persuaded AICD to take everything online. There will be no investigation if an entrepreneur wants to build up a college. Only a deficiency report in terms of the AICD standards and the college facilities will be sent back to the college to rectify. Is that a measure to today's state that 90% of the colleges are less than adequate as per the chairman? Thank you so much. Maybe the relevancy, there are lots of restrictions. I think first we have to understand that particular problem. Secondly, what is more important is any educator for that matter, whether government, private, anyone, that commitment to education is more important, honesty and integrity. That because of the circumstances, if we have less faculty, we must empower our students in the best possible manner so that their education is to the, at the same par level as that of the rest of the institutes. For that today, technology enabled learning is possible whether it is NPTEL lectures from IITs which are available online, there is MIT courseware available, Stanford courseware is available. I think uh, some of the faculty members who can sit in the class and the classes can run there on a video based lectures and then faculty can do mentoring, facilitating the students and with less faculty also we must be able to manage the show. Create excellent students out of that, that is the most important thing which we must understand and therefore probably little more freedom is given, I think output uh, today we are talking about uh, a bit based accreditation where outcome and output is going to be measured. That is more important. And if you really take it seriously, probably the graduates who are coming out, they may be evaluated and then the good quality education, which is bad quality education, can be probably defined. I think I fully agree with you that some of these things we need to understand. The second one is uh, uh, about uh, the pyramid, I think. Uh, this country, unfortunately, doesn't respect dignity of labor, uh, unfortunate part. Therefore, if a student goes to an ITI and starts working in a factory on a shop floor, he is looked down upon compared to a person who is supervising a diploma engineer and someone white collar job sitting in an office in an air-conditioned space, he is given more respect. And unfortunately, that's why every ITI fellow wants to become diploma, diploma to an engineer and the pyramid has lost its significance. And if you infuse that particular dignity of labor, a person who is doing shop floor job is as important as someone sitting and designing a machine in an AC environment, they are both equal with in terms of salaries and all that. I think many important things can happen. And I, I don't know about health regulation in terms of, you are talking about hospitals actually. But when it comes to health education also probably there also salaries are fixed. And I, I, it's not correct that there is a relaxation in terms of uh, all those regulations but in terms in of hospitals health. it is not. Hospitals it is. Same way in industry it also doesn't have regulation. I think uh, that comparison doesn't sound uh, correct actually in terms of education as far as uh, that is concerned. And then uh, uh, something like concurrent list. This is another problem this country faces. Because education is on the concurrent list. If center wants to do some reform, there are hundreds of uh, reasons why the particular state government will say we will not adopt that and we will not accept it. And I think uh, this situation, I don't know why it was uh, made certain category of things, you know, in concurrent list and which has been creating problems at times. And in terms of AICT, rather than regulator, in fact, it was both regulator and a fund giver also earlier. At least the two activities are now separated slightly and accreditation is taken care of separately. But if they really become mentors or facilitators, I think that would be a great thing in this country. Thanks a lot, sir. In fact, it's really heartening.